What's up, true believers? It's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the 16th day of October 2022. It's a little bit windy here at Site B. Uh, we are under a high winds warning, but it's about 70 degrees and nice and sunny. But the winds were pretty awesome last night. Like, Anyways, it's Wednesday, so it's time to take a look at all the tabletop role-playing game product that should be, might be, could be on the shelf of your friendly local game store by the end of this week. But as always, because we live in the real world, uh, shipping is still an issue. So before you go to your friendly local game store, uh, that's uh, North Coast Role-Playing in Eureka, California, because that's all that's left. <laughs> Mine's closing. Um... Before you go to your friendly local game store and get mad, oh, gee, GM said this was out in stock, maybe call them and ask if they have it in stock before you go there because, again, shipping and production issues are still a thing and probably will be for a while to come. That said, let's take a look at what should be out this week and if any of these sound interesting. From Third Kingdom Games, we have Populated Hexes Monthly, number 10, 11, 12. These are all uh, soft cover supplements for the OSR, OSE. They're $8 each. They're basically uh, teeny adventure zines. Number 11, you visit the dreaming city of Ka'ubar. Uh, number 11, you uh, go to the Shadow Plotel of Lang, which is a cursed lake filled with snow melt. And number 12, you go to a garden and deal with stuff. So each one is like a teeny little adventure slash list of monsters slash articles so think dragon magazine from lamentations of the flame princess we have lamentations of the flame princesses rules and magic player core book ninth pretty printing this is 25 dollars. this is the uh infamous lamentations of the flight flame princess core rule book uh grim jim does a ton of stuff talking about lofp um Ra Ra rasputin does a ton of stuff talking about lofp uh, Aaron the Relentless does a lot of stuff t talking about LOFP. I had a copy because Aaron the Relentless sent me one, but uh, I made the mistake of loaning it to somebody and never got it back. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for another interesting, sort of twisted, but based kind of on real histories, sort of uh, Lamentation of the Flame Fishes, there are people out there who can explain it better than I do. But it's out again, reprint. From Crucible 7 Games, we have for Warhammer Fantasy, Archives of the Empire Volume 2, and Artifacts of Power. Archives of the Empire is a hardcover supplement for $35, and Artifacts of Power is a hardcover supplement for Warhammer Fantasy for $40. Artifacts of the Empire includes artifacts, magic items, stuff like that. And Art Artifacts of Power includes more stuff. So Archives of the Empire is... Magic items, uh, monsters, history of the empire, artifacts of power is magic items, armor, weapon, rules for building stuff, Warhammer stuff. So, yeah, just, you know. From Osprey Publishing, we have Crescendo of Violence, a unique cinematic role-playing game. Uh, it's a hardcover rule book for $35. You live in 2093 Nero City, the city that just doesn't care. A dystopian technological marvel where hot concrete high rise it's cyberpunk. Uh, neon noir. So cyberpunk meets uh, pulp. pulp. So you got a, 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 a cybernetic monkey playing a, the ja playing jazz, and you've got a you know a cyborg with a Tommy gun. So combine cyberpunk with uh, 1950s crime film noir and you've got whatever this is could be fun it's not rare when osprey comes out with a role-playing game but when they do it is usually pretty good osprey normally just makes supplements you know uh sort of history things like uh the complete history of the abram 71 tank that's the kind of books osprey usually puts out so they're a great source for resources books but when they do put out role-playing games every now and then they're usually pretty good from all rolled up we have out of the ashes this is a unique 2d10 system uh, for the core rules is $40. For the quick start rules is $9. Quick start rules are supposed to be free, usually out of the ashes. You are survivors seeking to protect and rebuild your communities in a world of deep magic shattered by war. 
So post-apocalyptic fantasy type stuff. From Politically Incorrect Games, we have Spooked Incorporated. This is a soft cover rule book for $20. It's a uh, dealing, you know, game about dealing with aliens, ghosts, vampires, giant insects, and you are the player characters whose job it is to go out and investigate them and see whether they're real or f make believe. So, Stalking the Night Fantastic, Chill, Call of Cthulhu slash Scooby Doo type of thing. Modern day. Um, cinematic horror role playing about a secret organization that goes out and does ghost hunting type stuff always fun from disaster tourism we have the dark this is a unique role-playing game that uses candles a deck of cards and dice it is a solo role-playing game for 14 dollars. it's a game about being lost in the darkness and using your memories of better time so this sounds like one of those role-playing games that's also comfy you know Therapy. Okay, first, it's a solo role-playing game, which, you know, if I wanted to play a solo role-playing game, I'd just play a video game. Second, it involves candles. Yeah. How did your house burn down, sir? Well, I was playing this game by myself with candles, and I knocked... Yeah. Uh, no. If you need therapy, go see a licensed therapist. A role-playing game or board game or card game is not going to replace the work that going to a therapist actually takes. So, yeah, playing a game can be therapeutic, but if you want to play a solo role-playing game, play Hearthstone, play Diablo, play, you know, Civilization, play Minecraft. Yeah, so nothing really stands out this week. Uh, Crescendo of Violence from Osprey Publishing could be cool. Always nice to see Lamentations of the Flame Princess coming around again. I like the idea of the OSR, OSC mini adventure slash things. And all the, you notice all the names are like based upon, like, you know, Lib Desians of Lang, uh, Plateau of Lang. So, yeah, that's an interesting nod to an old school reference and eight bucks each. That's pretty cool. Um, now, speaking of tabletop role-playing game product that used to be on the shelf, continuing in their uh, attempt to eradicate any connection with the past, Wizards of the Coast announced this morning that they're getting rid of Dragon Magazine. Now, Dragon Magazine used to be a physical magazine about gaming. It's been around pretty much as long as the hobby has a few years ago it went mostly digital on D, D sites then it went all digital the only way you could get it was either through D, D beyond or wizards of the coast subscriptions to dragon uh a few months ago they said they weren't going to make any new issues but the old issues were still available including the complete archive going all the way back you know to the 70s but as of this morning they are removing dragon and all of the digital issues from D, D beyond and the wizards of the coast app so if you want to get uh any of this content saved get to it now because oh no wait they just announced it, uh, it went, disappeared at midnight last last night so midnight last night was the last year so basically dragon magazine in any in, in its entire history that was still being saved on D, &D Beyond slash Wizards of the Coast slash the Dungeons and Dragons app. Gone. So if you have any copies of it, great. If you don't, oh well. If you had a subscription, well, you know, supposedly they told you they were canceling it a few months ago, but it's Wizards of the Coast, so who knows if they did. And if you have any physical copies of Dragon Magazine just still laying around, their value just went up. Because Wizards of the Coast continues to try and just sort of say, we have no past. We have no connection to the past. There's nothing going on. You do not see anything we've done for the past 48 years. All that matters is this. One D&D is going to be 100% backwards compatible, except we're getting rid of everything that existed before one D&D. So, it's not. Now, people might be going, well, that's only OSR, OGL stuff. It's not 5e stuff, so it doesn't matter that Wizards of the Coast is getting rid of the old stuff. They're just ending the edition wars and further proving that 1D&D is, you know, backwards compatible and the way to go. Except no, because Dragon Magazine had 5th edition shit in it. 
online and has had fifth edition support since 2014 and since i mean you know it was supporting three and four when pezo had it in fourth edition then when Dra wizards of the coast took it away from pezo that started the whole you know downward spiral that led to the birth of pathfinder and the you know disaster that was 4e when 5e became a thing in 2014 they started making 5e content for dragon so anybody who's out there going, well, this isn't a bad thing because it only supported older stuff. No, this is once again Wizards of the Coast saying, guess what? One D&D is not backwards compatible because everything before 2014 were going to be gone. And all the 5e stuff is going to be gone. Because remember, they're also trying to, well, at least rumors say, get rid of the OGL. The OGL supports 5e. Now they're trying to say, oh no, we, we're not going to support 5e anymore. We're only supporting 1D&D. &D. 1D&D &D is not going to be backwards, backwards compatible. It is going to cause a, a schism between the 5e players and the three people on the earth who are going to play 1D&D. &D. It's going to cause more people to abandon Wizards of the Coast for another game. It's going to create the, another Pathfinder if it hasn't already. And making choices like this is stupid. Either... Make it free for everybody and just say, you know, we don't care anymore. It's public domain dragon magazines, but we're not going to support it or hide it behind a paywall. So if anybody wants to get the old stuff, they have to pay to see it and you keep it as a digital library, which would cost you nothing once it's digitized and on the cloud. But no, you get rid of it and you get a remove all the history of dragon that was on that site going all the way back to the 70s. And you're just like, it's gone. Yeah. That's the tabletop role playing game news for the week. If you appreciate this content and want to pick up any of those products, call your friendly local game store to make sure they're in stock before you run down there and get all upset. Till next time, I'm the face that runs the place, the OG GM, your guy to all the tabletop role playing game news, weather, and general internet nonsense, continuing to just look at the trash fire that is Wizards of the Coast and go, dude! Press secretary! Please, for your own good, hire a press secretary, you idiots. Till next time, please like, please share, please subscribe, please buy my merch, because I need that holiday money, and I will talk to you later. Stay safe, and get off my land.